So your boss says, SharePoint Analytics are okay, but we need to use Google Analytics. Don't worry, we've got it covered. One question I get asked a lot is how can we track SharePoint usage using Google Analytics? The good news is can be easily achieved using a SharePoint application customizer extension using the SharePoint framework. In this walkthrough, we'll go through what it takes to build that component and to start tracking using Google Analytics. The first thing we need to do is get a tracking ID. So we need to go to analytics.google.com and we need to have a Google account, of course. If you haven't set it up before, click the Start Measuring button, like in this example. Create an account name, accept the defaults, and click Next. Choose your time zone, a property name, it has to be at least four characters, and your currency. In our case, it's British Pounds. Make sure you don't click Next at this point, but expand the advanced options and make sure that you choose Create a Universal Analytics Property. Make sure that toggle's switched on. Make sure that we choose only to create that option and type in the URL of your site. In this case, it's our site.sharepoint.com that we want to capture analytics from. Click Next, complete your business information and then click Create. You'll be given a tracking ID, make sure you copy that and save it away as we'll be using it later. The next thing we want to do is scaffold our extension. So using the uh, command prompt or terminal on a Mac, we need to make sure we're using Node 14 LTS. And once we've confirmed that, we need to scaffold our extension. So type yo and then choose the Microsoft SharePoint generator. Set the solution, set the folder, answer yes when said, do you want to deploy it across a tenant? Because we certainly do in this case, except the other defaults. Choose extension, choose application customizer, add a description, and then allow the extension to scaffold itself. Finally, let's open it in Visual Studio Code. I do that from a command line by typing code dot. So open the SharePoint assets folder and edit the client side instance XML, we're going to replace the text that's given us by default with tracking ID, and then we're gonna paste in our tracking ID that we got from our Google Analytics step. Next, do the same for elements.xml. Replace that default value and add in your value. Of course, we could put a dummy value in here at any time if we wanted to deploy this to more than one site, and then we could configure it later, and I'll show you how to do that. So now we need to add the code. So within Visual Studio Code, open the source folder up and open the TS file that's been created for you. The first step is to delete the content of this class. Make sure we keep the outer uh, content there and we're going to replace this inner content. The first thing we need to do is store the current page and we're also going to need to store if this is the initial page load. A little bit more about that later on. Basically this is used when we determine if this has been a full page refresh or whether it's just been a partial load, a bit like when you do a search from a header in the page. We're also going to need to respond to two events in our code. One will be when the user searches from a top bar, and that will be a partial page load. And the other will be when the user navigates between pages, and that will be a full page reload. So we need to start with a couple of functions in our code. The first one we need is to get the current page and the path to it, and we're going to call that function get fresh current page. So it knows wherever it is to get that page. And we're going to store the result of that in our local private variable. So as we're using an application customizer events to track where we move, we're going to have to create our first function, and this is going to be called navigated event. So this is called when we navigate. We then get the tracking ID from our properties that we've passed through, and we write out an error, of course, if it's missing. But if successful, we save the current page to our variable navigated page. Now, if this is the initial load of the page, then we call the function real initial navigated event. And as we'll see in a moment, this scaffolds all the Google Analytics code that's provided to you by Google, but in a way that can be written out in React. If it's not the initial load, 
maybe we've searched from the top bar, then we call real navigated event for a partial page load. However, in both cases, when we update the current page, we need to record it so we can remember where we are. So looking at the function, we call the initial navigated event. We log it and then we create a script tag. And then we load up the functions from Google and we append it to the header of our page. We can then create a temporary tag function to store in the data layer of the browser and to store our tracking ID and use it later on. Next, we need the code for a partial page load. And of course, we need to check that the Google Analytics code has been loaded so that we can call this from our function. The final step is to overwrite the onInit function. This is called when the extension is loaded. After logging the event, we use the extension's current content placeholder and add an event receiver that calls our navigated event function, which is called when a user performs a search from a header of SharePoint. Then we add the application navigated event, which is called when the user navigates between pages. After returning our promise, our extension is ready to go. So we package our solution up by typing gulp bundle dash dash ship. Then we create the package by doing gulp package solution dash dash ship. We drop our package file into the app catalog. So once you've deployed it across the whole tenant, make sure that we tick that option. We can then change the tracking ID a bit later if we need to. So now I can track page views with Google Analytics. As mentioned at the outset, the source code to all of this is found in the description. Let me know in the comments how you get on. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy coding. We'll see you next time. Thank you.